Hi, Ann. How are you? I'm good. It's great. Well, I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you. Well, first of all, I got to tell you, there's a couple different people that I'm connecting with on the other side. All right. This is crazy. Um, I'm going to stop like this. I'm just listening to what the other side is telling me. Um, I have a soul that's coming through and telling me they passed of their head. Who passed of the aneurysm or like the brain tumor? Uh, my son passed away earlier this year and he, uh, he didn't necessarily, he didn't necessarily have a brain tumor, but um, when he died, they think that uh, the tumor that he had in his vena cava caused a blood clot to rush to his brain. That's who's here. I'm sorry. That's your son. Cause he's explaining, listen, you're going to understand when they show me things, I kept hearing of a tumor and then I kept feeling my head. There was a pressure in my head. So I thought he was trying to show me when he kept saying I had a tumor, I had a tumor. No, it's his way of just trying to show me what had happened before he had died. Your son is here. And know that one of the things that he's telling me is that you tried your hardest to save him here in this world. Because your son tells me that this was something that you were already researching and already looking into because he's talking about you bringing him back to different doctors. He remembers you bringing him to different doctors and to different hospitals. And more importantly, that you weren't just visiting local hospitals. Your son just told me that you brought him near and far to go and get treatment. Do you understand that? I did. Was his, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't say another word for a second. Was his, was his doctor from New York? At one point, I was trying to get him into Sloan Kettering in New York, but um, I decided to, to do a different route of treatment instead. Um, what, don't even say another word, because I'm going to tell you, your son's already telling me. And this is what's so amazing, is that I'm going to tell you something, Ian. Do you mind if I tell you everything? I would love you to tell me everything. I will. Because your son just said to me, when he was here, he was still young. And you did not let your son know anything about his treatment. You know, you didn't want him to know that he was sick. You didn't want him to know what was wrong. So you hid so much from him. You hid, you know, all the things that you would be doing behind the scenes because all you cared about as his mother was making sure that he was a normal kid, that he had a normal life. You wanted him to have fun. You were like, you handled all the stress, all the concern, all the medical, and you just wanted your son to be like every other kid. Do you understand that? Yes. So your son, it wasn't until he got to the other side that he shows me all the things that you were doing. He shows me you hiding phone calls with the doctors and literally running into the other room and saying that it was someone else and not letting him hear what the doctors were saying on the phone. He shows me you going from state to state and weighing this hospital versus this hospital. He tells me that you are gonna pack up and go into another area. He shows me all these things that you are planning on doing. And what's so amazing is that to you, it wasn't even about the money or about anything. It was about getting your son the help that he needed. He exactly, said, exactly right. And your son shows me that he even knows that when he went to bed, you would go and you would research all the things that were wrong with him. And you would connect with or find other families that were going through the same thing and other children that had the same thing. So your son, first of all, wants to thank you for being his hero here in this world. <laughs> Because the hardest thing is, is that you feel like you were going through this all yourself. But I got to tell you something. He also tells me there was a big issue with what he had because he talks about this tumor being unoperable, but there was an issue with an operation. So that shows me, I, listen, I'm not a doctor. I was an EMT. I don't know everything, but I do know that for what he's showing me, because when your loved ones go the other side, he automatically knows everything. He knows all the things that you kept secret from him, all the things you didn't want him to know, all those things. You know, we're shown when we pass on to the other side and your son is showing me when I'm connecting with him that this tumor had become wrapped around something or uh, encased with something, with another organ. Do you, do you understand that? Yes. So he says to me that even if they were to go and operate on this, your son is showing me that he had a very, there was a very severe risk of bleeding. There was a risk of a bleed out. So it had to be either near, an, I'm guessing based on what I'm seeing that had to be next to a major artery or something like that, because he's bringing- It was his vena cava. It was his main artery. That's what it's gonna be. Because he shows me that it, he goes, Matt, he goes, it was such a struggle because there was so much planning. And if they were to do this, he would have bled out and passed. 
So they were trying to treat this in other means beforehand. He keeps telling me about they were trying to shrink it down and they were trying to do all these things beforehand, but he never made it to that point. He did it. But let me tell you something, okay? And this is something that is the hardest thing that I ever got to tell you, okay? Is that this wasn't something that just happened. Your son shows me that he had this for quite some time, quite possibly from when he was born. He did. He was born with it. He shows me when I'm connecting with him that this was a ticking time bomb. And it was something that in the beginning, like, I feel like you didn't understand how bad it was. Do you understand that? That's very accurate, yes. Because your son showed me that in the beginning, it didn't affect him all that much. It did affect, he says, a little bit of his growth, he's telling me. But other than that, he says, he was like every other kid. So he tells me that it wasn't until it started to affect his growth and him getting in him maturing that you really truly understood how tough this was. But I also got to tell you something else, okay? That you don't know. Because sometimes, you know, I never know why children pass. You know, and that's something that when I pass on one day that I want to find out myself because it's something that I, can, I still can't wrap my head around as a psychic medium every day. But what I can tell you is that your son shows me that this was something that he had slim, he had a very slim chance of, of even getting older with what he had had. He says, so the hard part was, is that this wasn't something that could be cured overnight. And this wasn't, this wasn't something that could be fixed overnight. Right. And you had to be very careful as a mother because one wrong thing could have cost you your son's life. And you lived in fear of that every single day. And you lived in fear of making the wrong decision because knowing that you could have caused your son's passing. But I do want to let you know that this did happen naturally, the way that your son had passed. Amen. Your son is telling me that he thanks God every single day for allowing you to be his mom. Because you gave him the life that every other kid would have dreamed of. He says, I never even realized I was sick. Because he shows me you taught him how to make friends. You taught him, you taught him how to interact with other kids. At, sometimes he talks about not being able to go to school. So you would teach him at home and you would homeschool him and do certain things. So I got to tell you something, all right? And don't take this the wrong way because I'm, I'm, I'm meaning this from the bottom of my heart. I do readings every single day, right? Of moms and kids who don't have any illness, who you know were raised without the struggles that your son had to go through. But it's very rare that I see a connection as strong as you and your son. So even though your son went through such so many challenges and so many struggles, you had a connection with him that very few moms get. Do you understand that? That's so true. <laughs> Because of the fact that you had to be there holding his hand through every single thing in life. And that means giving up your life to be there for your son, because you were living life on the side of him every single day. So your son's coming through right now because he talks about you trying to search for answers over his passing. And your son also tells me that you've been trying to go to other mediums or talk to other mediums, and it hasn't been a good experience for you. I don't know why, but he tells me that. Do you understand that? Yes. <laughs> So listen, it doesn't mean that those other mediums weren't good or those other <laughs> mediums didn't know what they were talking about. But sometimes, you know, it's hard. Different mediums receive information differently. So your son says to me, Matt, he goes, my mom is up against all odds. She's been going to other mediums and she hasn't been feeling like I've, like I've come through or I've connected or that I was able to talk to her. Do you understand that? Yes. And then you left even worse because you're like, I don't know if I can believe this. I don't know. I'm, if I'm struggling every day to 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 not think that I'm crazy for the signs that I get and for the dreams that I have and I I ask him for every day for signs for validation even though I am logical and I'm I'm skeptical and I just want to know it was really him and that I'm gonna see him again one day well I'm here because I can promise you that you will but what I can also tell you <laughs> is that you were used you were used to being there for your son every day clothing him, helping him, bringing him to doctors, planning out his days, being there. And then one day, all of a sudden, he was taken out of your life. And that's something that I wish that nobody would ever have to go through. But I can tell you one thing. The reason why you're questioning all of that is not because you don't believe it. It's because you're going through grief. 
And you know, the one thing is that grief is the worst thing that we go through as humans, right? When we lose a loved one, because grief is the one thing that makes you doubt everything. You can know in your heart that your son is with you. You can know every, you can, you can see a million signs. You're, you're, you can receive so many dreams, but grief is that one thing that makes you question if you see, if you will see your loved one again. But your son is coming through today loud and clear because he's letting you know that you will see him again. And that more importantly, he's sending you those signs to thank you for the way that you kept him going through life. He knows that you kept his shirts. He knows you kept his shoes. He knows that you have all the things of his. He says, but what he wants is for you to be able to keep moving on and to keep moving forward. That's what's so important. And he just said to me, I love you more. Because you just said in your head, I love you. <laughs> so know that that's your son's way of acknowledging and letting you know from the other side that every single day that goes by, all those signs that you see, all those signs that you feel, all those signs that you experience are real. And that's your son's way of validating today that he did make it to the other side, that he is okay. And more importantly, he is safe and at peace. Thank you so much. I really wish I could come through the screen and hug you right now. I needed this so badly. And I, I just had a feeling he was going to come through today. I just had a feeling. Well, listen, I know that he brought you here today. Thank you so much.